Well, thanks for the, the wonderful introduction, Daniel. And thanks, everybody, for coming to Camillo World. Um, before I start, Daniel mentioned my wide range of interests. And so I'm going to pass these around the room. And, oh, yes, this is dangerous. This will resurface on Wednesday, the dangerous demos. Uh, yes, so just pass them around, and um, we'll come back to this later. So the project I'm here with today is Reciprocate. Um, who has looked at Reciprocate already? Yeah, you've had a look. Um, who tried to use it for something? A few people? Very good. Um, what can people tell me about Reciprocate? What comes to mind when I mention Reciprocate? Sorry? Good architecture. Good architecture. Anything else? SIP compliance. SIP compliance? Okay. Monkeys. 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 Yes, we have monkeys and lemurs and baboons and all sorts of dangerous animals to go with my dangerous um, toys that are floating around the room. Um, so a little bit about how we work. The project is primarily developed in C++, but we also support um, some Java and Python interfaces now. Um, it's cross-platform. So I do all my development on Linux, but one of our other major contributors, uh, Scott Godin, works on Windows. Um, so both Linux and Windows are very well supported. Um, because of the architecture and the very um, high quality of the code, it's also easy to support other platforms like Android um, and cross-compiling. Um, it's a BSD-style license. It's actually the vocal license. So this um, affects um, you know, the choices you have when you release binary products and whether or not you release source code and how you, um, how you have to attribute that work. Um, there are packages for many distributions, like Debian, Ubuntu, and Fedora. Um, who uses packages for things? Yeah, and that, this can be convenient. I'm also a Debian developer, um, so I can upload back ports of the package for the stable Debian release, so you don't have to wait two years for the next Debian release to get the current version of Reciprocate. You can get it from back ports usually two to three weeks after I make a release upstream. Um, we use Git, primarily with GitHub. We have continuous integration with Travis. Um, who's been using Travis or Jenkins or another continuous integration tool? Yeah, and they're very convenient um, for detecting problems in contributions, which is important in a community-based project. Um, we have lots of unit tests. Um, and these were developed before we had the continuous integration systems in place. So now that we have the benefits of free, sort of, uh, free services like Travis, all our unit tests can be run over and over again. Yeah, when we wanted to cross-compile for Android, we could run our unit tests. We have lots of them, and that's, a, that's an important way for people to start contributing as well. Um, some reasons to choose Reciprocate which may be part of a project, or it may be for your whole project. Um, the IPv6 works really well, because it's always been there. We didn't retrofit IPv6. So if you're going to encounter IPv6 at some point, if you haven't already, um, you'll be reasonably safe with Reciprocate. Um, the TLS. Um, this is also something that's been implemented very well in Reciprocate. So if you want to run um, SIP over the real internet where you have to deal with things like NAT, you can use TLS to help it get through those firewalls. Um, for several things that I do, I use port 443. Um, so it looks like HTTPS traffic. Um, it also supports uh, federation using domain validation in the certificates. And all of this 
is already pre-configured when you run the SIP proxy. So you don't have to manually reinvent the wheel each time you deploy it. The default is to federate. Um, but you can change that and customise it if you need to. Um, it's extensive coverage of things from the SIP spec and from other RFCs that have appeared since then enhancing the SIP protocol. Um, you can use low-level APIs directly. So if you want to write code for passing messages, you can use the parser directly. If you just want to make a user agent and you want to use a single class to access a or to create a user agent, you can do that as well. And that hides all the difficult stuff behind the scenes. Um, you can also run the processes without compiling or modifying anything yourself. There are many different processes which I'm going to cover in a moment. Um, it's a very generalised architecture, which has been mentioned already. When we needed to add WebRTC, we only had to add a couple of classes because the architecture for transport code is very generic. So we just added WebRTC classes and they fit within the existing paradigm. And it's the same thing for adding other things. If you want to add another authentication backend, such as uh, Radius, I mean, I added Radius myself a few years ago, you just add a class and it drops in to the existing code. You don't have to modify things in a whole lot of places because every aspect of the stack has been designed to be customised. Um, so let's look at an example of that low-level API. Um, in this case, I'm going to talk about a handler script that takes SIP messages from Homer um, pushes them through a message queue, and then a little C++ process is running, taking them off the queue, and in a try-catch block, it just asks the message parser to pass the message. If the message is bad, an exception will be thrown, and the code can report that or log an error or whatever. So this can be a useful way of examining things outside of your SIP architecture. Um, so we can call that parser API directly. And just to show how easy it is to pass a message, this is taken <coughs> from one of the unit tests. Um, the first, I mean, 80% of what's there is just a string containing a SIP message. Um, this one line here passes that message, passes the string into an object. Um, it will throw an exception if something is wrong. Um, and the final line here takes the method from the object and displays it on standard output. So that demonstrates how to access headers or how to access the request line with C++. Um, so a high-level example, um, we have a, a sample user agent called TestUA, um, which demonstrates how to build a conferencing <coughs> server. Um, it's basically one class for a whole conferencing service. Um, it has a command line interface, so you can interact with the participants, you can invite people to join or cut them out or change the mixer settings on the fly. Um, and the same API can be used to build a soft phone, um, a voicemail server, a B2B UA, um, you could even use it in a, in a hard phone <coughs> solution. Um, so the user agent class and the conversation manager class are the two classes you can use to build um, things with the high level API. And here's a, an example. I've just taken one of the <coughs> methods from the API and demonstrated how when an incoming call arrives, your code is notified about it so it's event driven um, and you can decide whether to answer that call immediately or whether to, um, whether to defer answering. It might depend on a user interface before answering, but in this case, we just answer that call immediately as it comes in, which could be a useful way to build a conferencing server. Um, so there are a range of callbacks like this for the events that take place in the service. Um, 
So some things that have been built with Reciprocate um, is Repro, which is a SIP proxy. It's very different to Camilo. Um, Repro um, is a lot more concise. The number of things you can do without modifying the code are quite limited. But on the other hand, it just works out of the box for a lot of basic situations. So if you just want to run a simple um, you know, SIP service for a few users to connect to, you can install the repro package and just start using it. You just have to put in your domain and your users and you can just get, get up and running quickly, um, including WebRTC and TLS. Um, we have a turn server, which is called return. Um, Recon server, which is a basic uh, B2B UA or SBC. Um, the music on hold park server, which can serve music on hold. Um, and the registration agent. This can send a register to uh, a provider of your choice, telling them to send calls to your SIP proxy. Most SIP proxies can't send a register by themselves. You need to run an asterisk or something to send register messages. But using the register agent, um, it's very easy to send register messages without running a full PBX. Um, so this is an example of the repro web interface, adding a root. Um, you can use regular expressions in the routes. You don't need to have any routes. If you just add users to the system and they dial each other, it will automatically route those calls between the users. You only need to add routes if you want to give them the possibility to make outbound calls. Um, and there's more. Um, these are some of the more obscure parts of the project that people are less familiar with and maybe they're a little bit less tested or incomplete. We have iChat gateway which is a gateway to XMPP. So this can be linked with something like Procity or eJabberD. Um, and Telepathy Reciprocate, um, which links with the telepathy framework on the Linux desktop. And so that allows you to create soft phones on Linux very quickly. Um, and SIPDial, once again, a very simple standalone utility like the register agent. It knows how to send a refer to different types of phone, like Polycom and Cisco and Linksys, um, so that each type of phone will dial a number. And you can send the refer through the proxy. It doesn't have to go through a PBX. Um, and the various phones will react to those messages and start dialing. Um, so this is an example of GNOME Empathy, which is a Linux soft phone, and how it can use different backends um, so you can see on the left, there's an architecture diagram. Um, the different backends are at the bottom row. So you've got things like XMPP or SIP. Um, and Reciprocate fits here as a SIP backend. Um, the front ends are all developed by other developers. And by providing a backend, we don't have to work on the front end. We can let other people develop those and interact with Reciprocate. Um, without even testing against Reciprocate. They can test against another SIP backend and then we can drop in Reciprocate and it should just work. Um, so that's a very modular architecture. On the, the right here, you can see the buddy list and actually making a call to another user that's been found in the buddy list. And that whole buddy list is, is generated by the empathy front end. That wasn't developed as part of Reciprocate. Uh, so what next? Um, you can mix and match. You can take something that you saw today, like the XMPP gateway, and use that with Camillo or with another SIP proxy. Um, you don't have to use everything from Reciprocate because of the very high adherence to the standards, everything should interact with products from other vendors, um, including Camillo. Um, if you do want to get started quickly using the packages, see the RTC Quick Start Guide. Um, that's a complete step-by-step -step guide. Um, and if you're interested in using Reciprocate in a product, you're very welcome to contribute unit tests 
to help test the features that you depend on. So that when we make changes to the code, if your unit test reports a failure, we know we have to fix that before the next release. That helps all of us. Um, so where did my toys end up? Did everyone see them? OK, so we've just got a minute left. So we will come back to these in dangerous demos on Wednesday. And um, who's here for the first time at Camillo World? Yes, so plenty of victims. <laughs> um, so as Daniel mentioned before, I run around doing lots of different things. Um, where I started in communications was with ham radio when I was 14 back in Australia. Uh, this weekend, I'm going out to a free software conference in Tirana in Albania. Uh, Lovely. Yes, and we've got the use of their dictator's uh, pyramid. Now, he built this to be his tomb, um, but he wasn't so popular, so they didn't bury him there. But, <laughs> but back in the day of communism, people who built radios to receive signals from abroad were actually locked up by secret police. Um, so to put a, um, a ham radio antenna on the building that was meant to be his tomb is quite fascinating. Um, so that, there are a lot of young people in Albania who are learning about free software for the first time, learning about technology. Um, so this is a project I've been working on for some time. So um, you can find out more about this on my blog. Um, and I might do a test of my radio here in the dangerous demos. So. I don't think we have any time for questions, or how, how does it yeah, work, Daniel? Maybe one question until we have the uh, next speaker uh, somehow warming up. Anyone having a question about here? Uh, can you talk about the SIP outbound and identity support? Yes, we have SIP outbound and identity support. Um, in the soft phone that that Daniel mentioned before. So Lumicall is a soft phone for Android. It's based on SIPDroid. Um, it uses um, TLS and it uses SIP outbound and the repro proxy accepts that. So that makes it very easy to do things through NAT. Um, and so you can find out more um, if you ask me later, but it is very well supported and I've personally used it and been quite happy with it. So. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Yep. Thank you.